In this video, I'm gonna talk about this guy and this guy and the rest of the guys like him that maybe I will never get to use in paper even though I just got them I got them delivered through mail uh, yeah, this guy of course is Lures of the Dream Den, Companion, the biggest offender in today's modern meta game before we get into it, I got a question basically from Bin Sieta, one of the most loyal watchers of these videos and he basically asked what's gonna happen with Helen Skills after the Companion mechanic gets changed and that's the topic the companion mechanics will get a revision by June 1st, which is in four days. So then something is supposed to happen. And it's hard to think, I mean, my, my position on predictions is it's hard to predict. Uh, it's almost impossible to predict what's going to happen, what, what Wizards of Coast will do, or what kind of change they will implement, or how that's going to affect the meta. That's, you know, we can't really predict that. People will make videos on predictions, and sometimes they will be right, and then people will call them smart, sometimes they will be wrong, and people will forget they had said anything in the first place. So my idea is that we can't really predict, but the only thing we know is that from now on, there should be at least I mean, if they make any meaningful changes to Companion, if they just say something like, oh, your deck needs to be 61 cards instead of 60, uh, yeah, then that will not be a meaningful change. But if they make a meaningful change to Companion, that will imply that Companion will have a cost. It's impossible to predict what kind of change will they make. Will they make you exile a card from your opening hand? Will they make you mulligan to 6 if you want to use your Companion? Will they? We don't, we don't know that. But the reality is that it will become a cost. Hopefully, it will become a cost. And then, basically, how that affects Harland skills. And before we look at the Harland skills, we can look at other two decks that also will, will have their... They're also playing Lurus, like Junt and Burn, and see what happens when a Companion does get a cost. So right now, Junt are deciding not to play Bloodbear F and not to play Liliana the Bill. And what is that? It's, this is a cost in their deck building. These are some of their most... the strongest cards. But the reason is... It's not an equal comparison, it's not this cost, it's not even close, the cost of not playing them is not even close to compared to the power that Lurus gives you. Give Lurus, as I said in my previous video, is not one card more. Lurus is at least two more cards and an engine that can generate, basically can run away with the game on its own, that is always in your hand. This is, it's not even comparable, it's not worth three cards, it's, it's just worth so much more. It really is like so much power, it's like better than the Lion of the Void and of the Bale and all that. And the thing is that it comes at no cost. So why would you not run it? You know, yeah, the cost, the, yeah, you cannot play the Liana, but it doesn't matter because it's so powerful that this cost is not, just not comparable. But now let's say the Companion has a cost. Now, John needs to decide, is it worth it to play with this Lurus card and not play the Lion of the Bale? And they basically have a decision to make. Maybe it will be better to play John with Lurus, and maybe we play to, to play Jan with Blobbery Elf and Liliana. Maybe it's better to play Blobbery Elf, Liliana, and Lurus in your main deck. I am actually quite scared of a Blobbery Elf cascading into a Lurus, into them casting something else. That's a, that's a line. That's a plus three value in, in one play, right? So so let's think, let, they have a, but they will have a decision to make. Maybe we'll still see Lurus in Jan, maybe some people will adopt Jan, uh, Lurus in Jan, maybe some people will not play uh, Lurus and Jan. The same with Burn or Prowess. Even though they have a lesser cost to play in Lurus, there is a cost to play in Lurus. For example, I played the other day against King Fiend, and King Fiend does not trigger with Misha's Vow and Seal of Fire, which is 8 cards or 7 cards that they put in this Prowess decks. So that means that they actually making their King Fiends worse. They're also not playing, they don't have space to put Steamkin, uh, Runaway Steamkin in their deck, because that card just doesn't fit, they don't have enough cards. They cannot play Venom Reveler, which was one of the best grindy cards that Prowess had access to. So if Lurus becomes a cost, an actual cost, not only in deck building, but the actual cost of cards during the game, then the decision to play it or not is not so simple. Maybe maybe Burn will still play it, but it will become a cost that they will see, they will need to see if it's worth it or not. That brings me to Hardened Scales. Hardened Scales currently has zero cost to play to play Lurus. And the reason is the only two things that we had to do was to cut Scraviar Combiner, which is I was already not playing, and cut uh, and add some pain to Alan. Some some pain. It's really not that much pain. I mean I would like to kind of keep track of that. Maybe we're taking one to three points of damage maximum in most match in most games. And when we're playing against a deck that 
life matters, we are actually getting even less because we're careful. So in reality, it's very, very, very little cost. And we gave up no cards, like almost none of the cards that we want to play, we gave up. So for us, in the case of Lord of the Steel, let's say the companion, new companion mechanic, is still somewhat within the realm of being worth it, then I would still play Lurus, because why not? I mean, it's probably one of our best cards for the long game, longer games. Give us another angle of attack, give us access to a graveyard that we never used before. Uh, yeah, why not? And in the case Lurus just becomes not worth it, it doesn't matter. I think Skills is here to stay. We have pinned the, we've got basically the best card we could ask for in the form of the Ozolid. I don't think we're even, not even close to seeing how strong Ozolid is because just Companion just exploded in a, in a way that actually made made it hard to keep up for most decks, but but Ozolith is, is really it's really brutal. When you have both handed skills and Ozolith in play, it seems that you're doing some of the most broken things you can be doing in modern right now. So maybe if Lourdes is not worth it anymore for us, we see oh the cost of the cards in play the cost of the, the pain of mana and maybe Scabier Combiner or whatever else you want to play in your deck. Like maybe Karn uh, Sign of Urza. Then maybe we cut the Lurus. We go back to being mono green, we have no pain in our lands, and we can play these cards that we are not able to play right now. I think that will still be strong enough. And if you look at the games I've played, Yalurus plays a, a, a role in some of the games that allows us to basically win the game because of the Lurus. But a lot of games we just win because we're just playing hard scales, you know. Hard scales, it's winning without the Lurus. Was winning before, without the Lurus not even a year ago when we were playing against Hogax and all those guys, and it can win again. Now thanks to the Ozolith, even though Max Opel has been banned. And also, you know, I think I learned so much from this period of trying to splash for white or for black. When I've done this in the past in Harness Skills, I always way overdone it. I realized I was playing too many fetch lands, I was playing basics, I even played sometimes Arkham's Astrolabe. None of that is necessary. I realized now that we can have an almost painless mana base while having an extra color. And that can open, and that brings me to my next point, that can open kind of the world for exploring the different possibilities we have in Harness Skills. For example, I used to run a list that was running Embry, Ethereum Sculpture, and Mystic Forge as a grindy package to kind of win the longer games as versus control decks. And also basically Embry working as, as a pseudo lures that can keep on bringing cards back from the from the graveyard. Um, and maybe that's a possibility when explore again. And that's what I would like to say as a final thought is it's a good thing I mean, we shouldn't be sad that, let's say, Lurus becomes a cost and our deck gets worse, because it's a good thing that companions become a cost for the, just the health of magic in general. We will be able to explore more builds that don't have to have Lurus. Right now, you cannot play hard and scales, basically. I don't think you can play hard and scales and be competitive without Lurus. You could be, you could win games, but why wouldn't you play Lurus? It's basically free, right? I mean, it's just added value to your deck. So. With this, if they make changes and they make them in a, in a way that makes sense, we'll be able to start exploring modern again, magic again, in a way that doesn't have to include the companions. Right now, every time I have an idea about a deck, I'd rather change, just adding blue to hardened scales, adding whatever, maybe adding red, somebody was on Facebook adding, is there, is there a gruel list? It's like, yeah, maybe you could play Lightning Ball. Lightning Ball is extremely well positioned right now, but why would you, if you can play Lurus, right? They, it's not a comparison it's between one car and one car. It's a comparison between one car and five. Or, you know, like one of the best cards that is always available compared to one card that you maybe draw is not even close. So you will always go for the Lurus. So if this becomes a cost, then the possibilities are endless. We can maybe start exploring things like playing a longer game with Karn, Sion of Urza. We can even, I even thought about putting Urza, uh, the Lord High Artificer in our, in our deck. You know, turning all, all our guys into mana dorks, and get massive ballistas. I mean, the possibilities are really endless with hand and skills, with robots in general, and with magic in general. I think it's a good thing the companion becomes a cost, even though it's a price we'll need to pay also ourselves. Everybody will have to pay that price, and maybe then other decks, other even versions of hand and skills can emerge and, and thrive because the companions are not keeping them down. So that's all I have to say about the topic. I think it will be a good thing. I'm looking forward to the change, but for now, I will keep playing Lurus and abusing those free spells and those free value that I get. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And yeah, I'm Mr. Seri, and please comment. What do you think? What do you think about these changes? Do you think we'll, we'll play Lurus? Do you think we'll not play Lurus? And 
yeah, let's let's look at it in four days and maybe I'll make another video like this thinking what are my thoughts now that we actually know the reality, right? So thanks a lot and see you next time.